Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is Lab Rats. Yes, your favorite podcast in the whole wide world based on the Andy Walker uh, podcast index. It's true. It is true. You love it. If you go to sidewalker.com, you'll see it's the number one podcast posted on that site. Or labrats.tv. It's true. Anyway, welcome to the show. Today on the show, we're going to bore the hell out of you by showing you more Apple technology. <laughs> Yes, yes. I'm I've glad. Been, uh, I'm glad we started it off with uh, with such positive energy there again. Well, there's been some Apple weenies missing. There's too much this the technology on the lab rats, and it's just it doesn't appear to my pixel sensibilities. So you know we got to kind of appease those people. You know, actually, we had a bunch of people in there that were saying, you know. I've had enough of this Windows thing, and I'm thinking of making the switch to Mac, and we want to know more about the Mac. You know. So what are we going to do? <laughs> we're going to show them some more Mac today. Yay! Yes, so we're going to talk about one of the uh, utilities that is a basic thing on the Macintosh that you need to know about. All right, if we must. We must. All right, after this message, really exciting Apple stuff about the backup. No, it's not backup. What's it called? Disk utility. See, I don't even know the terms. Disk utility. <laughs> yeah, we can tell how much Andy cares. Just, just watch this side of the screen for this episode. Just ignore <laughs> that side. I'll put a black bar over it. <laughs> After these messages, we'll be back. This is Biff and Boo. They are Andy's cats. This is Andy's pillow. It is freshly laundered. This is Camtasia Studio 4. It's the best screencasting software ever. Now answer our trivia question. What screencasting software does not smell like cat pee or hide when it's bad? I'll be back at the end of the show with the answer. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I tell you, we do this. It's so much fun all the time. Uh, the latest thing is, see, now Sean's complaining about his water. It's going to be a complaint show. Yeah. This episode of Lab Rats brought to you by Whining From Him and Whining From Me because he hates the water. He's been drinking from my tap. And Apple... Oh. Yeah, I don't know where that thing is connected to. It looks... There's this hose that looks like it's it heads toilet. out over there. Great. <laughs> Cat water. Cat water. Ah. I'm just glad we didn't get it from our good friend Steve Huntress, who would be like dingo water or dingo something like that. Right. This water right. brought to you by the Outback and Dingo's pooing in it. <laughs> Good thing he's not here right now. All right, let's get into this because this is, they don't care about Dingo water. They care about, well, not, not all, about 10% of them care about this. So let's have a look at the yeah. disk utility at Mac You know, it's, it's worth mentioning, I guess. Uh, a lot of people with the Switch to Intel, more people are thinking about switching to Mac. So, you know, the list of users out there, you might not care about this, but, you know, take a look at it anyways. The, the people that are thinking about making the Switch, this could be useful information. So, no more snide comments from you. Okay, I'll, be, no, I'll be good. I know you secretly love Mac and you just play a, a hater on TV. Don't give away my secrets. All right, disk All right. utility. Disk What is utility. it? What's it there for? Is it for utilitarian disks? It's exactly what it sounds like, a utility to deal with your disks. Okay. So, we're gonna fire this up here. We're gonna go to the finder and open a new window. So to find the disk utility, first of all, what you want to do is you want to, first of all, open up a Finder window, go to yes. Applications. Are you recording this for our friends at home? I'm recording this Very for our good. friends at home. Good. So, and you go down to the bottom of the Applications list. Yes. And look for the Utilities folder. Why don't you use Spotlight? You could do this with Spotlight as well. I'm yeah. just showing you the long way. Okay. So if you, if you want to do this uh, this way, you just type Disk Utility, and there it is. Wow, that's great. And that's almost like the new Vista search. Yeah, I think uh, there's probably a reason for that. But we'll uh, talk about that at a later date. So open up the disk utility. <laughs> See, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make fun of Vista's being, you know, five years late to everything. Um, okay. So when you open up the disk utility, yes, you'll After see half an hour clicking through Windows. You will see uh, the uh, the disks that are attached to your system now. Yes. What this comes in real handy for is if you're having little problems with your operating system for whatever, and Mac does have problems with the operating system just like Windows does, uh, largely it's a case of bad permissions. What health so, permission? So, like, Mom, with, can I have a cookie? Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's, it is largely like that, and is it's it? the same way on Windows. You have read, write, execute permissions. Right. So you can, if you have read permissions, you can see what's there. So if you can you, look in the cookie jar. Right. 
Okay. If you have write permissions, you can change the contents of that. So you can take, open the cookie jar, you can break the cookie in half and put it back in the cookie jar. Right. And execute, you can actually run things as well. Oh, so you can open the cookie so, jar and take the cookie out and eat it. Yummy. Or throw it at your head. Uh, this may not be the perfect analogy, but no. you get the idea. What you this should have been a food demo. Files. This should have been the food demo. demo. Next time. So what you can do with these files um, is determined by the permission flags that are set on each of those files. And the same as on Windows, same as on Mac, same as on Linux and Unix. Okay. Uh, when these things get set incorrectly, wonky things can start happening. So if your operating system suddenly doesn't have the ability to read a file that it's supposed to be able to read or to write to a file that it's supposed to be able to write to in order to change data, mm -hmm. then you can get crashes, you can get any number of things that just go wrong. With, uh, with the Macintosh, you simply click on the disk that you're using and you go down to the bottom of the first aid section and you have verify and repair disk permissions. Yes. Now verify just checks to see if anything is wrong. Repair checks to see if anything is wrong and then fixes it. So typically I say don't even bother verifying, just fix it. So mm. you can click repair disk permissions and it'll start uh, going through the uh, hard drive. It's reasonably quick. Now, um, under what circumstances would the permissions get bunged up? If you install a new piece of software and it changes the permissions on something else in the operating system that shouldn't be changed. Like what? Um, like a movie? N well, it wouldn't be a movie, but if you install a new application that's designed to author movies or to convert movies, it may change the permissions of another application okay. that's already in there that's oh, using part right. of a shared library of applications, utilities, whatnot. Okay. So here we go. We're seeing that on this one, there's a, a number of things that are set incorrectly on this one, and it happens. Most of the time, you won't notice anything major happening on your system when the permissions <laughs> are messed up. So that's, that's one thing. And again, with this one, you also have the ability to verify the disk. So you have the, the boot sector and all that, all the things that make the disk. So it checks to see the health of the disk as well? Right. OK. And, uh, well, that's good. It's a good feature. So you can verify the disks, but you can't repair the disk you're working on. You just find out if it's buggered up. Right. So you have the ability to get to the disk utility from the uh, installation CD that comes with any Macintosh. Right. So if, for whatever reason, your master drive that's inside the system messes up um, and there's, there's a problem with the disk permissions, you can actually boot from the disk utility during the installation process. So you don't actually have to install. Okay. You can just go and fire up disk utility and run it from the disk, okay. and then you can have access to this. But sure. uh, for this, you, you can do that with an external drive that's attached. You can verify the disk and repair it and see that it's in good working order or okay. not. Uh, the disk utility is also the place where you can erase the drive. So if you've got an external drive, you don't want to do this on the one that you're working on. I don't no, think but you if you want to get rid of everything on this external hard drive, right. then you can just go yeah, erase. Re right, so you erase it and you would choose the volume format. So I've chosen Mac OS uh, Extended because, uh, and Journal because that's the most compatible with the Macintosh. If you want to have a drive that is compatible across multiple operating systems, mm -hmm. so you can use it with Windows, mm -hmm. you maybe use it with Linux, then you would choose one of these other ones. So you use the Unix file system for use with Unix, yeah. obviously. MS-DOS would be what, FAT32? MS-DOS would be FAT32. Okay. So if you wanted to create a disk that will work on Windows or Macintosh, you would go and choose MS-DOS. Even yeah. though it's not MS-DOS you'd be using it with, it's compatible okay. with Windows. And uh, NTFS? And NTFS isn't an option here because with the Macintosh, you can read from NTFS partitions, but you can't write to them. So yes. you can't actually create an NTFS volume. So NTFS being the, uh, the file system that's used by Windows XP and also mm -hmm. Windows Vista. Right. So one handy application for this particular thing is if you are swapping files back and forth between this and you've created an external drive and you format it on the Windows machine and it is an NTFS, you can actually bring it on here and just say, OK, and then reformat as MS-DOS, then it'll work on both of them. It's not as efficient as NTFS sure. or, uh, or the uh, Macintosh file system. But it's a compromise. It's a compromise that'll allow you to sure. read okay. and write on both. All right, fair enough. It's worth mentioning on this for erase um, here. When you're doing that erase process, if there's already data on the disk and mm -hmm. you don't want it to be recoverable, mm -hmm. you go into the oh. security options so. and you have the option here of don't erase the data. That's the default. You can zero out the data, just put zeros across every bit. Yeah. Seven pass erase or 35 pass erase if you're really, really paranoid that someone's going to get their, uh, their mitts onto your data. Wow, OK. I, I don't no. think most people need to do that unless it's like government level. Meaning 35 so pass, meaning the drive will write garbage data over the right. existing disk 35 times. Right. So if you're really uh, 
if you really want to make sure that no one gets access to this. So, for example, if you're about to donate this uh, drive to Little Geeks so that someone else can use this. LittleGeeks.org. Yeah, but you have all of your financial data on here. You've got things that you just don't want other people seeing. It yeah. doesn't have to be necessarily naughty stuff, but if you got naughty stuff, there's a good reason to do it. Naughty. It just has to be personal stuff. You don't want anyone access. Here's how you can uh, get rid of it. You know there are school kids that watch this? There are. Don't and talk about naughty stuff. I would never dream of I'm thinking naughty stuff like pulling puppy dog tails. <laughs> what are you thinking of? I'm depri depraved. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So partitioning, again, when you're dealing with your um, setup of the uh, hard drive externally, mm -hmm. you can actually use this to partition it into multiple partitions. So you can change your volume scheme to... You know, Partition being multiple. a virtual drive, multiple, right. uh, uh, sort of, it looks like three or four drives, but it's actually mm -hmm. one physical disk broken up into bits. Right, so you have like this bit for my data, this bit for my photos, this bit for my music, et cetera. This bit so for my naughty bits. For the pulling of puppy dog tails, yes. Yes, all right. Um, and you can set uh, them up uh, you know, in different sizes if you want. Uh, you can set them up in equal sizes if you want. It'll, it'll give you the option to do these one by one or what have you. So if I want to set it up as two partitions, then it'll give me two. And then I can just change the size by dragging Ooh, this around. Clever. I like that. Yeah, and, and again, if you've gone for eight partitions, it'll do the same thing. It'll allow you to... Well, that's clever. So that, it's a very nice feature. That's something that Windows does not do. No. Well, built in anyway. You have to get, a, you have to get you know, partition magic or something. That's nice. So I'm going to leave it as current because wow. I don't want to re I'm erase this. I'm increasingly becoming a bigger and bigger Apple fan with every minute of this show. You say that every single time, and you don't mean it at <laughs> all, ever. Do I love the Apple? Right, okay. On. So RAID Good. It gives you the opportunity to do RAID as well. <laughs> exactly. So it'll kill bugs. <laughs> Everywhere inside your machine. Now, if you, we've talked about RAID before, using sandwiches as props. That's one of my favorite episodes. If you go back into our archive and look up our RAID explained, that's one mm -hmm. of my favorite, using sandwiches. Yeah, so you can set that up through here as well. We're not, I'm not going to dwell on that too much here nope. because it's a very specialty item. Yes. Restore. You can actually restore from a backup as well. Hmm. So it's very powerful. So it's a handy little backup. utility designed for disk level stuff. Right. Built into the Mac OS. And there's actually one more feature in, in this, which I'm going to show you after the break. All right. Let's take, see a message from our sponsor. We'll be right back with one more hot Mac tip from Mr. Carruthers over here. Earlier in the show, we asked you what screencasting software does not smell like cat pee or hide when it's bad. Is it A, Biff and Boo, B, Andy's Pillow, or C, Camtasia Studio 4? The answer is Camtasia Studio 4. Learn more at labrats.techsmith.com. And we're back. <laughs> yes, I guess we are. I always wanted to say that. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> with another fine episode of Lab Rats. Today, on this segment, we're going to show you one extra feature. Are you imitating all the Apple dweebs out there? No, I'm imitating your fan base, all those people <laughs> that, uh, I don't know. All right, good. <coughs> one more hot Mac tip here with, from, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, show me a tip before I choke to death. All right, so we have... Uh, you be okay over there? <laughs> okay, so it's called disk utility for a reason. And it's not just because it's hard disks. It can actually deal with these little optical disks as well. DVDs? DVDs. Not DVDs, CDs, whatever. If it's a disk, you can throw it in here, and we're going to see something. I, I found this copy of Final Destination over there. I just bought the Thrillergy. The Thrillergy? Final Destination 1, 2, and, yep, yeah, 3, 2. But people die in uh, plane crashes, car, a truck. Smashes in roller coaster accidents. It's entertainment for geeks. All right, so, well, apparently in certain jurisdictions, yes. we should mention, you're allowed to back up things for your own personal use. Army hearties. Right, so let's just say that uh, if you're in anywhere, you can have a disc that you've already made of your own and you can back it up into an image. Huh? Or if you have this, right here, and you don't want to lose this fine, fine bit of cinema mm -hmm. ever in mm -hmm. the history of time, mm -hmm. you can create a backup of it using Disk Utility. And I'm going to show you how right now. So you'll notice over here on the screen that uh, 
the pretty copy, disc pretty copy. here, ah! Final Destination, has appeared as an option over here. Wow. So we've got our two hard drives, and we've also got this. So if we want to uh, to back this up. Yo, ho, ho, right. and a barrel of rum. <laughs> I'm not, I, you know, I'm not going to be keeping this one. It's myself. a legal copy. It's a legal. It's a, it's a legal copy. This yeah. is the. Well, it's not. A, it's it's for personal use. It's for personal use. Right. Exactly. So what we want to do now is go to the top where it says new image because we're creating a disk image of this disk. Right. So we're going to click on new image. It'll bring us uh, up this dialog box, and we can type not a pirate. Copy. I misspelled that, but you get the idea. Not pirate. Not. Uh, we'll, we'll fix that up okay. because I'm a bit of a perfectionist here. So he is. image like format. Sometimes. Yeah, we can we can use a compressed format here if we like, but yes. we can also create a DVD CD master Whoa. here. So I'm not going to suggest that you make a bunch of copies of this fine bit this of is cinema. It's not sanctioned by our lawyers. So you can create this, and it'll create an ISO file. So you know when you download mm -hmm. Linux and from one of the sites and you want to burn, burn it, copy, it's creating yeah. it as right. an ISO image. file. Yes. Right. right. And you can put encryption <laughs> on it as well, if you like. <laughs> here. Right, so okay. when, you, when you do this, you're going to hit Save, and it's going to start making a, a backup make copy of this. So and it'll save see. that as an ISO file on your, right. on your desktop. Right, and in this case, it's actually saving it as a .cdr file, but you know, roughly the same sort of thing. So you know what? I'm going to cancel this, because I really don't want to copy of that movie. Sorry, Andy. It's really good. I'm sure it's fantastic. So oh, it's that's good. it for Disk Utility for now. I mean, wow. there's, there's a lot of other stuff hidden in here. Those are some of the basic things you'll want to, uh, to use with that. Why am I holding this pen? Oh, yes, because I wrote some stuff down here on the, the back uh, of this. Picture time. It's a picture time. This looks like lyrics. Oh, is it? It's Tuesday afternoon. Oh, oh locked yeah. inside her. Oh, that's Moe's yeah. song. Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's 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 songwriting. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's very, okay, it's so very funny. Our associate producer, Maurice Cacho. Mo, taste friends. All right, yes. picture time. Picture time. So let's, let's bring this back up again. Well, apparently one of our viewers is Andy Walker. <laughs> I watched the show, too. So and and you notice what our friend Andy Walker is holding in his hand? <laughs> yes, yes. I was autographing. It was the uh, copy of the Absolute Beginner's Guide to Security, Spam, Spyware, and Viruses, the mm -hmm. security book with the longest name you know ever. Was this uh, photograph taken down in San Francisco at the ZM? Yeah, the ZM. Yeah, at yeah. The that was taping. At, uh, yeah, twit taping at MacWorld uh, in two thousand and six. Yeah. So enough of uh, talking about that's who my, you are. That's my friend Gene, Gene Troiano who is actually the, uh, the producer on Cyberwalker.com that does all the recording of Cyberwalker Radio. Mm -hmm. So I do a, a radio show here in Toronto. Um, and uh, she records them, and she preps them, and she cuts out all the you know, um, commercials and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I love you, Gene. This episode is dedicated to you. Yes, and Gene is a longtime fan of uh, a lot of the things that uh, we've been involved in. With she has, Lab Rats yeah. and with and Call, Call for, for Help, help and, all and with Leo's uh, yes. shows as well. So. Yes. And Gene, you should know that your lovely husband, Mike, sent me this picture and said, please, please, please put it on the show. So there you go. Awesome. Our gift to you. Thank you, Gene. Now this, another J. Jacob. Jacob. Jacob, and he's in Sweden. This episode of Lab Rats brought to you by the letter J. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you know what? Jacob took this photograph, obviously, in a, in a reflective surface. Yeah. Um, and I guess there's a, a mountain in the background. Looks like it could be uh, could either. Be. Well, who knows? Mountains or clouds. Where is it? Is it in America somewhere? No, it's in Sweden. Sweden. All right. Yeah. There you go. And this really is brought to you by the letter J because this is a technology class uh -huh. hosted by Joanne. Hey, Joanne. I don't, I don't know if Joanne is in the photograph here, but this no. is this is her class, and apparently they uh, show lab rats in the class. Every hey, hey, hey. So That's cool. Go. Hey, Hi, Joanne. Guys. Cool prof. You guys have a great prof. We love Indeed. you, Joanne. Thank and you for showing it. This is at Madeira it. High School. Where's that? Uh, I believe it's in California. So yeah, it's in America. It's in America. Very good. And you know what? Who's the doofus with this? Like, hey, man, it's cool. Is he the cool dude? Is he Fonzie oh, of the class, John? Way to call uh, one of your fans a doofus. <laughs> I mean, he's really into it. Look. Hey, he's, 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 he's embracing lab rats. Man. He's your number one fan. Sweet. He is the number one fan. He's not a doofus at all. Oh, sorry. Sorry, he's not a doofus. <sighs> You're the doofus. I am the doofus. That's true. I've got to say, love the Danzig shirt. Yes, very good. Cool. All right, and that's that's it. Dudes, well, thank you so much for sending us uh, pictures. Keep them coming at uh, send them to feedback at labrats.tv. 
And uh, I think the beer is finally here. It's been an here. entire episode, like a week, we've been waiting for this. Right. Okay, well, let's wrap. Um, thanks for watching today. My name is Andy Walker. I'm John Carruthers. We'll see you next time. Bye. Are you ready? Get some water first. Mmm, poo flavored water from Andy's fridge. You should ask Steve to buy some extra. Mm. He'd have probably bought some of that Australian water. Australian water, it's upside down. Yeah, the one that has dingoes in it. Dingo poo water. Five, four, three, two. Ay, ay, ay.